Good morning. Uh, I'm Matt Smith, President of the Greater Pittsburgh Chamber of Commerce, and I want to welcome all of you to our May uh, First Friday speaker series. We're very happy to, to bring you today a discussion uh, related to economic development um, in our region with some of the leading um, economic development uh, professionals and leaders and, and, and folks who are really driving uh, our area and our communities forward on the economic development side. So we're very happy uh, to bring you today's discussion. Before I um, introduce, and I should note, it's going to be moderated by uh, the affiliate um, leader for our organization for the Allegheny Conference on Economic Development, uh, Pittsburgh Regional Alliance President Mark Thomas. But before I introduce Mark, uh, I do want to recognize and, and thank our sponsor, uh, which, as you all know, for the 2021 series of First Fridays is, is Comcast. And so uh, with that, I'm very happy to welcome Comcast uh, Director of External and Government Affairs, uh, Jennifer Clooney, uh, to the floor. Jennifer? Good morning, Matt. Good morning, all of our guests this morning. Um, the dialogue and partnerships that the Chamber fosters, along with the leadership that the Allegheny Conference has shown during the incredible challenges our region has faced and continues to confront has been nothing short of commendable. Comcast COVID response has been centered around something we've been doing for a long time, and that's strengthening our network, expanding our capacity, and developing critical infrastructure so that we can expand connectivity to more homes and businesses. Over the past year, this has meant extending broadband to more than 10,000 homes in rural Pennsylvania, including homes in Somerset and Fayette counties, and even more in the coming months. As a broadband provider and a company committed to digital equity, we know how crucial connectivity is for economic and educational opportunities to flourish. We welcome opportunities to work with counties and municipalities to identify broadband dead spots and provide estimates for what it would take to fill those dead spots with a wireline solution. Over the past 10 years, Comcast has connected more than 10 million people in America to broadband internet in their homes, the overwhelming majority of whom were not connected prior to signing up through our Internet Essentials program, which connects low-income households to the internet for under $10 a month. We recently announced that we will invest $1 billion over the next 10 years to help further close the digital divide and give even more low-income Americans the tools and resources they need to succeed in an increasingly digital world. We've partnered with school districts like Pittsburgh Public Schools, Ambridge Area, and McKeesport School District, and community leaders like Neighborhood Allies, the City of Pittsburgh Housing Authority, to fund internet services for those in need. All are providing internet access to families in need at no charge. Our $1 billion commitment includes investments in a number of critical areas, such as additional support for our ongoing lift zone initiative, which establishes Wi-Fi connected safe spaces in over 1,000 community centers nationwide for students and adults by the end of this year. This includes dozens upon dozens of lift zones in our region with more being lit every day. It's estimated that these new commitments will impact as many as 50 million Americans over the next 10 years. I'm proud that last summer, Comcast launched RISE as part of our $100 million diversity, equity, and inclusion initiative. This multi-year plan provides consulting, media, and creative production service from Effective TV, our advertising sales division, or technology upgrades from Comcast Business. With our help, small businesses are gaining access to valuable resources at a critical time and now have a stronger foothold to keep their business growing even in the face of ongoing pandemic and economic challenges. And this has included small businesses right here in our region. I'd love to talk more about it. If anyone has questions, feel free to reach out to me. And with that, Matt, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jennifer. And thank you again for Comcast's uh, sponsorship and, and support of our first Friday uh, series this year. It is, it is most appreciated. Um, I'm, as I said earlier, we're very happy to bring you uh, today's uh, panel, uh, which is going to be led by PRA President Mark Thomas. And, and I think you know what we've uh, used as the operative word for really the next couple of years uh, phase that we'll be in as a region is competition. Uh, we're going to be in a competition for uh, talent uh, to attract and retain talent. We're going to be in a competition for business investment. And so for us, the question is, how do we best position 
our region um, to compete on that playing field. Um, and, and we wanna make sure that all co corners of the region are as best positioned um, to compete uh, with other markets, with other states um, for that talent and that business investment as, as, as much as possible. And so today's discussion is really part uh, of the effort that the Allegheny Conference is undertaking across uh, our organization. You know, as I said today, really led by the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance and, and Mark on the economic development side, but, but we're aligning all of our efforts on the research side, on the policy side, on the economic development side, to make sure that the conference and its partners, uh, most importantly, our partners, uh, are really well positioned in this new environment because with the dollars flowing from the federal government, with potential dollars flowing from the state uh, and local entities um, in, the, in the state and in our community, uh, this is really not even a once in a generation opportunity to transform the region, but really something that is never gonna happen. Uh, again, and, and you know, we're pushing all in the same direction. We want the region uh, to push in the same direction to capture as much of that investment and to capture the policy changes that we think will catalyze economic growth, will catalyze equity in our region, uh, and make sure, again, that we're well positioned. So that's really uh, the operative word, competition, over the next couple of years. And, and we're doing everything we can to make sure all corners of the region are as well positioned for that competition as possible. Um, so now I'm very happy to hand off the program uh, to Mark Thomas, who is president of the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance. Mark has been with the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance, I think, Mark, for about a year and a half, almost two years at this point, and, and has done amazing uh, things at the PRA. Uh, and so we're very happy to have Mark with us to lead this discussion and uh, bring you today's first Friday uh, discussion. So uh, without further ado, Mark, take it away. Great. Thank you, Matt. Um, as I mentioned, I lead the PRA in the 10 county regions. Uh, we serve as a front door really for businesses looking to expand and invest in Southwestern PA. Um, I also chair the Power of 32 Development Fund, which is one of the conference's tools to position development sites for economic projects in PA and our neighboring states. Uh, there's obviously tremendous interest in the region's path forward following COVID. Uh, during the pandemic, the PRA and our partners really served two uh, roles, supporting local businesses while positioning the region for growth. Um, and obviously, just months before COVID, the conference had published our Next is Now 2030 agenda that really mapped out what we saw as long-term growth opportunities um, in key sectors and businesses that we really believe should grow and be attracted, uh, but really aren't limited to kind of specific um, some of those areas that we do really want to see grow are advanced manufacturing, innovation-driven technology, such as life sciences, artificial intelligence, and energy. Um, and so we think the region has an exciting future. Um, I will say while growth sectors matter, what has evolved over the last year, and this is really an important shift, is a place-based strategy in attracting people and business growth to the region. Uh, throughout Southwestern PA, we have major manufacturing office and industrial parks that are really within short distances of academia and many downtowns and town centers, which have all taken significant hits over the last year. Uh, while we all have our favorite places in our counties, uh, downtown Pittsburgh is especially important because it is one of the largest downtowns in the country and is central to a region that is divided by waterways, bridges, and a unique topography. Um, the Post Gazette's recent highlight of the longstanding relationship uh, of the conference and how it supported downtown's next chapter through history. Uh, and we view this moment as no different. Um, and so this awareness conversation will highlight how people at the front line of shaping the Golden Triangle, the city, and our regional path forward uh, are thinking about their work. And so at this time, I'd like to introduce the panel. Um, and so if you all can uh, uh, reveal your uh, cameras. Uh, and I'd like to start with Lance. And if you can uh, introduce yourself, but also provide this perspective on how your organization is thinking about growth uh, and competition and how you're working closely with uh, our, our counterparts on strategy. Yeah, sure. Hey, Lance Shimka. I'm Allegheny County's Economic Development 
uh, director. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the organization, we're a, um, a economic development finance agency under normal conditions. We're we're directing about 40, $45 million uh, in investment in affordable housing, commercial industrial development, brownfield reclamation, infrastructure work. We're also the, the land use and transportation planner for the county. Um, and then on top of that, we do a couple million dollars a year in annualized tax leverage deals, as well as probably eight figures in uh, tax exempt and taxable bond financing as a conduit through our authorities. Um, 2020 was anything but normal. So those last two, the tax leverage and the bond deals were way down, but the direct investment was way up, um, contrary to what many organizations faced. Um, and that mainly came in the form of a $15 million rental assistance program that we, we ran with Action Housing and a $20 million business assistance program that we ran with three local uh, community development finance institutions. Uh, we're continuing a lot of that work in 2021. We're just wrapping up another business assistance program uh, of about $15 million strictly for the hospitality and food service industries. Um, and you know, that, that work is awesome and important um, and great. However, it's really fun to start shifting focus away from as predominantly stabilization activities, right? And now to start looking towards a growth dynamic um, and we're excited to undertake some of that, um, some of that work. So, I mean, high level, I'm extremely optimistic about uh, the Pittsburgh region's ability to respond and rebound from COVID. And I think plenty of plenty of studies bear that out. Um, I won't I won't bore you with the listicle uh, references, but you know the the economic resilience of this region performs very well in black swan events. We have in the past. We will continue in the future no different now. Um, you know, we know the multifamily market is strong. We know the industrial market is strong. The office market is the big question mark, right? So it makes sense for all of us to get together, talk about conditions in our greatest concentration of our office market and, uh, and brainstorm some strategies to ensure that while our fundamentals are really strong, we're going to have to do some creative thinking to make sure that we really seize the moment um, here, because I think there is a tremendous amount of opportunity coming out of this and, uh, and we can position ourselves for growth in this region. So um, yeah, excited to be here, excited to talk with my colleagues about, about this important talk. Thanks for having us. Great, Lindsay. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, to you, Mark, and to Comcast for hosting this space. Uh, my name is Lindsay Powell. I serve as the Assistant Chief of Staff to Mayor Peduto, where I run the legislation and policy shop out of the Office of Equity. Um, you know, when it comes to development, when it comes to growing our region, I think the city has a crucial role in both the attraction of talent, the attraction of business, the attraction of investment uh, to the city of Pittsburgh, but also ensuring that we're retaining that talent. Um, how do we ensure that um, our city, whether it's, you know, the ease of getting from downtown to all of our, you know, 90 beautiful neighborhoods, uh, ensuring that there are spaces for uh, housing that's appropriate and affordable to those who are coming here, um, as well as making you know, business corridors uh, and uh, shopping and all those other things that make a city vibrant. How do we ensure all those things are happening at once to make um, you know, our strategies uh, sustainable? We wanna ensure that uh, on the front end that we're working with Lance's operation, as well as the URA and, and my colleagues there, uh, to, to bring people here, to bring, to make spaces for business, but we have to also be in the business of making sure that they stay. Um, the mayor has been committed uh, throughout his tenure to ensuring that as we're growing, we're expanding the pie and ensuring that uh, equity is at the forefront of what we're thinking about. And so uh, how do we make sure again, that these opportunities that are coming to our region are felt by all? Um, and so I'm, I'm really excited to talk a little bit more about um, our equitable development strategies and how we can better partner uh, with businesses and entities in the region to continue to make Pittsburgh um, vibrant and livable. Great. Tom? Yeah, good morning. Thanks so much. Thanks, Mark. Thank Matt. Uh, the Chamber Conference for hosting this. Comcast, of course, for hosting this. So thanks so much. 
Yeah, so I'm Tom Link. I'm, you know, my title today is Chief Strategy Officer. Those of you who know me, I've worn different hats and titles over the last several years at the URA and, um, you know, excited to have worked on behalf of the city and, and uh, you know, for many years really to, to help, you know, grow our economy and, and, and achieve sort of economic growth for, the, for our city and for our region. You know, for those of you who don't know what the URA is, the URA, the Urban Redevelopment Authority, is really the economic development agency that works, works on behalf of, I would say, the city of Pittsburgh. And when I say the city of Pittsburgh, it's twofold. The city of Pittsburgh as sort of a you know government and an entity, but really the taxpayers of the city and this and you know those who live here, those who businesses here, et cetera, to to really uh, you know create make Pittsburgh the uh, most vibrant uh, place it can possibly be. I'd say similar to Lance in the last year. I mean, I think as all of us have been, you know, a tremendous focus of our work was around um, stabilization and 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 trying to um, you know fend off, frankly, sort of economic disaster, right? So we put a, just a tremendous amount of effort, dollars and staff time uh, to keep people in homes, uh, to keep small businesses from closing. Um, you know, some things we're particularly proud of are, you know, just, and not alone with support of, you know, the city, Lindsay and others to, to, to help us with capital and resources, uh, but getting money to folks who needed it most, uh, who are in, in deep crisis. You know, we launched our, you know, a, a COVID small business relief program uh, really quickly <laughs> when we when this was all happening and got you know I think as it turned out close to seven million dollars into small businesses in our city that were otherwise I think may have just gone out of business immediately so you know, this is a lot of the work we've experienced in the past year you know thinking about this discussion and thinking about moving forward certainly you know recovery is is, is we have to continue to recover I don't think you know things are, are not going to be simple but really need to think about positioning ourselves for growth and when we think about growth I think we need to think about it you know, almost from a 360 perspective um, you know we have to create great places we have to places have to be affordable and you know place based initiatives small biz, business districts um, home ownership affordability you know both from the homeowners uh, you know, folks having places to live and, and also from a commercial uh, and business perspective. Um, you know, so moving forward, I, you know, I was thinking about this yesterday, you know, when the president made his uh, remarks to Congress about this plan. And I, you know, I don't think we should take lightly that, you know, Pittsburgh was the only city that was actually mentioned. <laughs> there was no other, it wasn't like some long list of cities that were talked about. And, you know, the president, of course, and of course there was some games in the ship and we all know that in terms of, you know, Paris to Pittsburgh and how, you know, Pittsburgh can make turbines. Uh, but but we need to take that seriously. I think you know Pittsburgh is a place that you know, in, from my perspective, you know, we we are unique in our competencies um, around innovation, but we also make things here. And you know, and it's it's an ecosystem that's that 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 can that can be that's robust and and can be expanded upon. And you know, I, to me, it's that's you know, from when I think about expansion, I think about we need to invest in that sort of you know ecosystem where. You know, we are helping, you know, to, to support innovators and, and advanced technology companies, but there's a whole ecosystem around that. I mean, these, these companies don't just sort of create ideas on, on computers, they're making things, they're building things, and there's an ecosystem around that, that that also supports that. And, you know, so building upon that, building upon, I think, I personally think sort of, you start within and expand, then you attract, um, you know, that's the way I think about economic development. So, um, you know, these are our strategies, and of course, from a, from a from a coordination perspective, I mean, none of this can be done sort of individually. Like the folks on this panel and others, you know, if we're out there on our own, just trying to raise money and do things. We're not going to be successful. So it has to be a, a, a regional effort. And, and, and you know, I'm proud to say I know all of these folks, and we talk all the time. So we're excited about that to work on strategies. So uh, you know, I hope those of us watching, you know, uh, you know, please know that your leadership here in the region, uh, we know each other. We're talking, and we're working as a, a unit to to advance our region, but. But I look forward to the, the questions and the panel discussion. So thank you. Awesome. Great. And I'm happy to have seen Tom in person recently. Um, cool. Jeremy, if you can introduce yourself. Uh, sure. Morning, everyone. Uh, Jeremy Waldrop with the Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership. Uh, thanks to Matt and Mark and to Comcast for bringing us here today. Um, these are super important conversations, um, and we appreciate the opportunity. Uh, the Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership was created over 25 years ago to really support the economic development and growth of downtown Pittsburgh. Um, we do that really as a place-based organization, uh, looking at the downtown office, residential, hospitality, arts, culture, industries, and what we can do as a community to kind of engage both the public and private sectors um, and strategies to support this growth. Um, downtown, as it's been mentioned, is, is the economic engine of the region. And while downtown has a small geographic footprint, um, it's an economic and employment multiplier um, for, for the entire region. It's 3.3 square miles 
but it accounts for 6% um, of the, the city's total land mass, um, but 117,000 jobs. Um, it's 47% of the region's office market uh, located here in the greater downtown area. Uh, downtown has been extremely impacted by the pandemic. Uh, there's no denying that. Uh, right now, we're about at 11% occupancy in our office buildings um, as folks slowly begin to return to work. Um, but we're very excited to see these vaccine rates increase um, and hear of more companies that are going to be coming into downtown. Um, but downtown isn't just about the large corporations. They're extremely important to the region, but it's also made up of small businesses, of artists, of chefs. These people really add flavor and culture to our city and are what make it such a special place. So over the last year, as an organization, we've really uh, been focused on supporting these small businesses. Um, through shopping events, uh, helping these businesses get online and, and sell things um, through the internet are things that they've never really had to do before. Um, we're really proud of our partnership with 412 Food Rescue. Um, with the support of the City of Pittsburgh and the RK Mellon Foundation, we've purchased over 70,000 meals from downtown restaurants and provided those to folks with pe uh, uh, experiencing food insecurity. Um, this is, you know, of course, that win-win scenario where we're supporting these small businesses, uh, we're keeping people employed, and we're also um, supporting individuals in need. Um, the recovery of downtown is critically important um, because many of these small businesses have lost their customer base. We've lost over 70 small businesses, small retailers, small restaurants in the greater downtown community. And while that's been offset, we've seen about 25 new ones start. Um, you know, with those lost jobs or lost dreams. And so um, we all know that small businesses are the lifeblood of our economy. Um, and we want to work hard and we need your support in kind of bringing that back. Um, critically important to our region is also um, our public transportation system. Um, our transit system has faced some unsurmountable budget gaps and, and will continue to do so until we really see our fare box revenue increase. So bringing folks back into downtown, um, encouraging folks to get back into mass transit is an important part of the narrative that we need to have as a region. Um, lastly, um, downtown Pittsburgh represents 24% of our um, revenue from property taxes for both the city and the county. So ensuring that, that we maintain value in the urban core is important for every component of our economy, our public schools, our infrastructure. Um, as we look forward as a region, we believe in this place-based strategy. We've been preaching it for decades now. Um, we've shown our resiliency in the past, and we know that through creative leadership of our public and private sectors, we are going to build an even stronger downtown, a more equitable downtown, and a place that people want to be a part of. We've got to support the theaters, the entertainment, the events and, con and conventions, um, and, and bring all these people back safely. And, and, you know, we're thrilled to have the support of the city and the county and, and the colleagues here on the panel and, and uh, look forward to, to continuing this discussion both today and uh, as we move forward. Great. Great. So I have a first question for Lance. Uh, one of the first, one of the products I was really excited about when moving to Pittsburgh was the terminal modernization project. Um, it's something <laughs> exciting when you see a brand new terminal. Yeah. Um, and obviously, when it was stalled, I was disappointed. But now that it's back on, can you really speak to the impact it's going to have for the broader region? Uh, gosh, yeah, that, I feel like that project sells itself, but I'll do my best. I, I'm an Airport Authority board member along with my colleague, Matt Smith here. So Matt, chime in if I'm, I miss anything. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of talk right now with an impending infrastructure bill out of Washington about critical infrastructure, right? And um, you know, in today's globally connected economy, I can't think of a, arguably a greater critical infrastructure piece than a region's international airport. And I think that's going to, to remain the case. Um, and it is, you know, it may exist within Allegheny County, but, you know, labor markets and real estate markets don't give, they don't care at all about political boundaries, right? It is a regional asset um, for I, all of Western Pennsylvania, some of Ohio, and some of West Virginia as well, right? So it truly is a regional asset. And we've got this amazing opportunity right now. Timing is everything. And you know, we have the opportunity to get the first post-pandemic airport out of the ground in the world. 
right? And that's a incredible stroke of luck from a design perspective. It's like the, the timing is perfect on this. And not only that, you know, it's, it's the opportunity to have our first, our first real airport since the Allegheny County Airport opened in 1931. Not US Airways hub, but Pittsburgh's OND Airport, right? And that's what I think is also so exciting about this. Um, the airport has outperformed, especially under Christina's leadership. Uh, we were on pace to crush the 10 million passenger mark in 2020. Obviously didn't happen, um, but the service expansion, the passenger expansion was kind of all undertaken with a, a non-purpose built asset, right? Um, so I'm really excited for the project to, to get, get, uh, get steam again. I think, like I said, the timing is perfect for some design adjustments to, to accommodate like what post pandemic travel is gonna look like. Um, and you know, it's, it's gonna be a regional asset, the front door to this region the, the face of the region for the global economy. And it's gonna benefit, you know, like I said, the entire, entire tri-state area. So we're really excited to get that back up and running. And I think it's gonna be um, a, an absolutely critical piece of this, this region's resurgence. And if you talk about the airport corridor broadly, um, you know, this is one, one element there, but you know, the real estate market out there is really booming. Uh, thanks to a lot of investments, tax leverage investments we made, you know, frankly, 10 years ago are really starting to pay dividends now in the form of the, the, that act, those activities in the form of site preparation and infrastructure work are really paying dividends now. That'll continue. The cargo element um, of the airport cannot be understated. Um, we typically think about it as a passenger focused kind of asset, but there's a ton of opportunity with cargo development, especially since COVID had accelerated the, the pace of e-commerce into, into consumer kind of consciousness. So yeah, I, I think the whole airport corridor and, and particularly obviously with Southern Beltway and Shell coming online, it's kind of a perfect storm for that whole, um, whole Western corridor. And I think it's, it's gonna be absolutely uh, impactful and critical for, for our, our resurgence here post COVID. Um, something Matt said when he kicked off the event was that we think about um, this through the lens of competition. Um, and obviously with the infrastructure bill pending and the stimulus bill that was passed, how do you think we all stack up against who we compete against? As iconic as Pittsburgh is as a city, we still do have to compete with Nashville and Austin and Raleigh and other mid-sized places. I'd love to hear... Um, Lindsay and Tom particularly kind of speak to where you think we compare and then what we need to do to actually be more competitive. Sure, I, I can start. Yeah, I mean, it's funny at the very top of this. I mean, yeah, Matt, when you said it, we're in a global competition, I think that's absolutely right. I, I think that, you know, how does Pittsburgh compare to other places? I think, you know, generally speaking, we've got to, you know, and Mark, you said at the top, we've got to, and we do this, you know, but identify what are our core assets, right? And I think there are, you know, innovation, advanced technology, there are specific assets that we have that are really unique to Pittsburgh. And we have to celebrate those. We have to recognize those and we have to invest in those, right? Um, and then I think, again, to my, to the top of the point, you know, we, you know, I, you know, I think what's unique to Pittsburgh is there is an element of a making here, right? We have, a, we have a manufacturing base, we have, um, skill sets here that are, are unique. And I think that combination gives Pittsburgh a le leverage, uh, uh, nationally, globally, really. So, you know, I kind of think in anecdotes and kind of real world examples, so I was even thinking yesterday, as we were thinking about this panel and, you know, business expansion and what's happening and you know, two things sort of just came across my desk, so to speak that, you know, just in our normal course of business, you know, we read yesterday about, you know, Astrobotics is growing and they're opening up their museum and they've, they're, 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 you know, they're literally, you know, they're making, they're, they're space scientists, right? <laughs> like building rocket ships and going to Mars and all these things. And this happening right here in Manchester, right on the north side of our city, a stone's throw from Heinz Field and a repurposed, you know, uh, industrial building creating lots of jobs and it's, it's super exciting, homegrown, you know, right, something that happened here in our city because of specific assets that we have. But beyond that, which is super exciting, and we've helped Astrobotics, I think a lot of folks in this call have, 
really, really exciting. We have to celebrate that, right? Beyond that is there's a whole ecosystem of local businesses that, that feed into what Astrobotics is doing. So there's a, another business we happen to be talking to and it's totally unrelated to each other in the, the context of what I was doing yesterday. But you know, there's, a, there's a, a precision machinist company in Homewood, North Point Breeze, that's a, that, that produces materials for Astrobotics, right? And they, they are not, these are not rocket scientists. These are folks who are making things, right? <laughs> They're skilled, skilled trades that go through apprenticeship programs really good jobs right in Homewood, North Point Breeze to Contour Prototype. I hope it's okay to name that individual businesses, but Contour Prototyping. And they, you know, they've, they've been around and they were, they, they, they've done some really exciting things, but this is a company that's growing, right? That they're, they're growing because of, of what, you know, because they have companies like Astrobotics in our city that are also growing, right? And, there's a, and this is just a simple example, just something that totally anecdotally came across my test yesterday, right? That we've been working with them, but so, you know, this is just a microcosm, but this is happening all over the place, right? And this is in Manchester, Homewood, North Point Breeze, these companies are within miles of each other, right in our right in our core, within you know stone's throw of downtown of Oakland, uh, of everything that's happening in our city. And you know we've got to celebrate that. And we've got to invest in it. And the other thing, and this may sound, you know, I, I was talking to a colleague of mine internally, and he said, "Well, it's up to you if you want to sound, you know, so so uh, sort of uh, corny." But you know, Pittsburgh's a funny like region. Like in some ways, we're like super humble, right? Like I think we're really like you know we like to be humble, and you know we're we're pretty like salt of the earth, and we just go to work and work hard, which is all very admirable. I think sometimes as a region, I think that we could be a little bit more like thinking about how we think about our sports teams, like. I'd like to see a study of what happens Mondays after the Steelers lose. Like there's a deep depression when like if one of our sporting teams lose and there's super excitement when we do well, right? And we are fiercely competitive in these arenas. We've got to be fiercely competitive in a global competition for expansion and for not just attracting businesses but the businesses we have, we've got to like celebrate them. We've got to invest in them and their ecosystems of how you know, workforce, land, everything to, to make that work. And I think it's a reason we've got to take it personally if companies that should be here either aren't <laughs> decide not to grow here, and uh, you know, to me that's a, there's a mentality to that, and uh, I see it, but I think it's we've got to keep uh, germinating that. So, um, you know, as we compete with other cities, like frankly, and you know, like I'm a Pittsburgher, and like you know, you know, it, we should not be losing businesses to Columbus and Nashville and Austin. I mean, there's some, there, I'm sure there are reasons to be there, not here, but um, you know, we, that should we can't that that's we've got to be, we've got to think about beating them. And I hate to say it, if folks are here on Nashville because I like Nashville and I like Austin, but we've got to beat them at this game. And yeah. it is it's a steep competition. So I'll leave it at that. And Lindsay, I'm curious your thoughts and others. So thanks. No, absolutely. I mean, I think there's something there to the anecdote that you were talking about about how um, you know whether intentionally or unintentionally, some of the kind of big industries are feeding into each other. Um, and I think when we're talking about competition, uh, we have to ensure that we are readying our workforce um, and our uh, residents for these new opportunities. So like even in the example that Tom was talking about, one of the initiatives that I, I think is, is honestly like brilliant that, that we get to work on is Rectatech. Uh, very simple, but we know that Pittsburgh is a burgeoning tech hub. We see time and time again that these massive uh, steam stem industries want to be in the city. Um, obviously they're bringing talent with them, but how do we create a pipeline that we have homegrown talent here? And so Rectatech is uh, uh, trying to kind of transform our recreation centers. You know, they're not just a place anymore for a hot meal and basketball, we do that, but you can also get world-class uh, coding classes, robotics classes, all for free in some of our most, um, you know, uh, distressed neighborhoods. Um, our rec centers are uh, located, there are 10 all across the city. Um, and the idea with Rectatech is that you'll be able to, um, as a family, come you know, get some basketball lessons, maybe sign up for summer programming, but also drop your kid off to world-class team STEM learning. And so I think it's that uh, you know, multi-pronged approach of attracting talent, bringing businesses here, making it attractive for them to stay, um, using our assets that, you know, Pittsburgh, we have a lot of vacant land, we have a lot of, um, assets when it comes to real estate. How do we pair that and making it attractive to come, but also building the workforce, building the talent uh, locally so that uh, they're not having to bring in people from, you know, New York, Boston, San Francisco, but we can say, hey, right down the street, uh, there is a coding class that's been going on for X amount of years and these kids are ready um, and eager to, to enter the STEAM STEM workforce um, right down the street. And so those types of partnerships, that type of thinking, I think is what makes Pittsburgh competitive and is, and is the type of thinking that'll push us kind of beyond mid or other mid-sized city 
um, competitors. Um, like Tom was saying, I, I think that at the heart of um, you know, Pittsburgh's excellence is that we're a, pit, uh, a city of innovation. Um, even when it came to steel, you know, we had some of the most innovative ways to, you know, create and build cities and, and build America. And here we are making a, you know, massive pivot to meet the challenges of today. And so I think embracing that innovative spirit um, and, and really uh, readying, our, again, our workforce, our talent to take on these jobs is the way, again, that we can be uh, the most competitive, uh, not just in the region uh, with, you know, uh, Columbus and others, but when we're talking about competition with Nashville, Raleigh, and others, um, uh, I think that's the way that we need to think about some of these challenges. That's great. Now, something that Tom had referenced of just the humility of Pittsburgh, you see that even with all the national calling out that we're receiving, uh, people locally are interpreting that in a humble way versus other cities could make that appear more as an entitlement or some type of shout out that is expected. Um, so I think that's a great thing about the culture here. Um, I'd like to Jeremy to really speak to um, what are some of the longer term investments you'd like to see downtown? Um, obviously, the partnerships in the midst of a, a strategic plan called Reforge downtown that will pivot and position it long term to thrive. I'd like him to give a sneak preview of just some of the things that you're thinking. Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, and, and just to echo, I love the fiercely competitive component and really taking our love of sports and uh, the agony of defeat and turning that into kind of an economic development, business attraction, people attraction strategy. I, I think we should just jump all over that. Um, yeah. As, as Mark mentioned, we've been talking to businesses, property owners, residents um, over the last several months about what we can do as a community to position ourselves for this investment. Um, you know, as I've mentioned, it's all about place in downtown Pittsburgh. And we're looking really at the investments that the city, the county, the state are gonna be receiving as once in a generation opportunities um, to make public investments that spur private investments and increase jobs um, here for our region. Um, as, in addition to the Reforge discussion over the last couple of years, We've been working uh, with the county, the city, the Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission, and the Port Authority um, on a downtown mobility plan. And that's not just about kind of getting cars or buses through downtown. It's really a vision and a framework um, and a blueprint for how we uh, support the transportation network, but also build the public realm. I mean, Pittsburgh is just an amazing place. I've lived in five cities. Um, I'm not from Pittsburgh. Um, and I think that we beat or compete with every single one of them that I've lived in from a place perspective. We have beautiful architecture. The topography is amazing. We have kind of big city living, small town living, all within 10 miles of one another. So how do we look at building on this infrastructure, um, you know, looking at uh, Buttigieg uh, uh, coverage in the paper this morning, you know, our riverfront system, you know, how do we invest in that? How do we partner with River Life are all super important to us. Um, so yeah, we have about $50 million in infrastructure projects that we'd like to see happen in downtown Pittsburgh that really do support um, the street life and activity in downtown. When we talk to employers, they are all about keeping and retaining the talent that they need to grow their business. And those folks want great restaurants, they want great shopping. They want safe streets. They want vibrant art scenes. And we have all of those things, but we have to continue to invest. I mean, we've all know the history. There was a generation of disinvestment in this region. And so we have some catching up to do. When you look at a Charlotte or a Nashville or an Austin, they're new and shiny and everything is clean. We're never going to have that. And we don't want that, like we're gritty. We're beautiful and historic and things that they're never, ever going to have because the crap that was built in the 60s and 70s is never going to look like what we have at the turn of the 18th into the 19th century. You know, those, those structures can't be replicated anymore. So we have to invest in those. We are excited about the opportunities to look at the historic buildings that we have in downtown and encourage new investments. If they don't make sense for office anymore because they were built 120 years ago for office users then, Let's think about how we can create new residential places. Let's add some affordability into downtown and create affordable residential places in the CBD, which is something that we really need. 
Um, you know, those are all opportunities that we really encourage and implore and will be advocating um, our elected officials to, to be bold about. You know, I appreciate the need to invest in um, our rainy day fund. I completely understand that, but we can't miss this opportunity to make huge strategic investments to, to build our infrastructure, to, to invest in this historic downtown and our historic neighborhoods um, and, and create places that are going to attract. We're never going to beat folks on weather, right? I mean, there's very few cities that, that we're going to beat on the weather front, but we can beat the heck out of them on a place perspective. So let's just go after it. Let's do it. That's great. And I want to ask quickly for uh, the participants, if you have questions, please add them to the chat. Um, and so we're starting, we'll start now in our last remaining minutes, uh, responding to some of the questions that were submitted. Uh, the first question that was sent, and this is regarding kind of the recent U.S. Steel announcement, um, how do we ensure that at least the economic development partners that we're maintaining relationships with businesses to keep major capital expenditure investments on that scale moving forward? Um, and then mending uh, fences when need be to make sure businesses appreciate that we appreciate their presence here. Uh, and I'd love for really Tom and Lance to kind of speak to that. I'll start. I mean, I think you know, generally speaking, yeah, I mean, this comes, you know, you know it's, it's um, we've got to build relationships. I mean, to some degree, you know, I think as an economic development professional, and frankly, what keeps me up at night is like, you don't want to wake up in the morning and read something. And then, you know, someone asked, did you ever talk to them? And you didn't. Um, that's really yeah. something we've, you know, don't like to hear. And frankly, it's terrible, right? So I think generally speaking, you know, having relationships with our job creators, you know, you know, it, it, to, to some degree, it's, it, you know, I've, I've quipped in the past, but I, there is a salesmanship to this stuff, right? Right. Like, you know, one thing I like it just personally, like when I talk to individual businesses, like I never, you know, I don't give them a list of folks to call, they can call me, right? <laughs> like, you know, and I will find out who they should talk to. Um, you know, so I think generally we just have to, we have to be proactive about that, not wait for both on the good and the bad. I think sometimes we have, again, it's, you know, we're all kind of judged on these things like, Hey, business is growing. Let's jump in and help them grow. There's a certain opportunistic to that, but also, you know, making sure that we know all of our, you know, as many job creators and those folks who are investing in our region and our city and, uh, and, and have regular communication and, you know, to the, sometimes you can't do anything. I mean, there, you know, I think another sort of thing we need to think about just generally is, you know, sometimes there's not a whole lot we can do. And sometimes market forces are beyond what anybody on this on this call can really do. But that said, you know, being ahead of it, um, addressing it to the best you can and, and thinking about strategies to um, mitigate or avert are, are certainly important. So I think that's really, you know, that's how I would think about it. Um, you know, I, there's a sales quip that folks who know me, I think I use it too often, but at my point in life, I only have so many things I can think of. But you know, there's a sales quip that like, you know, it's a lot easier to grow your own customer than to go find a new one. So, you know, you know, 80% of sales are customers you have typically. And then I think about that from an economic development perspective, you know, who are the businesses that are here, right? And we need to know them, uh, who's growing and then invest in them and help them to the best extent possible. So I think that's, you know, it's, it's, it's not a perfect answer, I think, because, you know, that these are serious things when businesses close and people lose their jobs. But, um, you know, from, a, from my seat, that's I think just how the, the work we have to do and how we, at least I think about that, so. Yeah, I think Tom summed that up nicely. I mean, I, I think one of the things, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I hear the mayor uh, frequently say, you know, Pittsburgh is, is small enough to get things done, but big enough to matter, right? And I think that's very, very true. And I think one of the, the things that I know Tom and I practice is like, this is a small town and we're, we practice like hyper accessibility. So I think that establishing and maintaining those relationships, particularly with our legacy companies are really, really important. And we always want to be in dialogue and understand how we can help, you know, um, in many cases, and I'll speak um, for, for Tom on this too, like the economic development agencies very much like to be a front door for all government, right? Government's broad, it's far reaching. And a lot of times um, I think the economic developers in the room pride ourselves on being able to, to translate between government and, and, and uh, private sector uh, speak. And so, yeah, I think really the key to a lot of this stuff, particularly with long-term investment um, is, you know, having that dialogue and, and, and keeping those relationships strong. And I think you'll find a lot of advocates, particularly in the economic development community, but throughout government, 
who are hyper accessible. It's not a big town. There aren't that many people you need to, to call to get a, a very um, helpful and sympathetic ear. And so we just, you know, continue to, to try and foster those relationships, encourage anybody uh, on the call who has an issue um, is impacting how they're thinking about long-term investment in this region. Call us, let's talk about it, devise a solution um, for, for it and try to path forward. That's great. Um, I'm gonna transition to Jeremy. So I was in Washington County yesterday and they hosted a back to business reception. Um, and I think it was good because it actually touches on a lot of the informal interaction that Tom and Lance referenced that we would normally have with business that was impacted during COVID. But that said, downtown is starting to think about how it reopens. Um, and I'd love to hear from you on, and this was a question that came from the chat, um, how do we make sure it's safe? How do we make sure that workers are excited to return back downtown um, so that it too can get back to business? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Uh, let's talk about safety first. I know that um, there's been a lot of concern. Many folks haven't been downtown since March of 2020, you know, for their day jobs. Um, and the streets are pretty empty. And when you come out of your office at seven o'clock at night, six o'clock at night, and you're kind of all alone, it feels a little eerie. It feels a little walking dead out there at times. Um, and so we are, A, wanting to welcome folks back. I mean, it's really on us. Like, it, collectively, we have to come back and, and bring it. Um, but we're really excited about the leadership that we're seeing from a public safety and public health perspective. Um, the mayor, uh, with CARES Act dollars, made an investment in Allegheny Health Network uh, to create a new street response team. These are social workers, uh, medical professionals, who are co-responding with police and helping individuals in need. Um, this work in earnest has really just been going on for the last 60 to 90 days as they kind of ramped up. And it is truly transforming the way that we respond um, to this crisis. Um, we've been talking to uh, uh, Department of Human Services about this is a pilot program. How can we begin to make this permanent? Because the police are completely on board. I think, you know, for the longest time as a, as a society, we've kind of re relied upon police to do the job that they're not trained to do, which is deal with mental health crisis, um, with, with, with um, kind of the um, the issues that they're, that we've divested in, um, which are, are public health resources uh, to address these effectively. And, and this is starting to switch that. So um, I think this has the potential to be a national model and we're very excited um, about how this early success is. And we're looking at ways as an organization that we can continue to make investments in this from a private perspective um, to make sure that it continues. Um, when we talk about welcoming folks back, um, we can't wait to get folks back here. We just started small things like our yoga in the square is now happening on Sundays and Wednesdays um, every week in downtown Pittsburgh. Next week, the Market Square Farmers Market kicks back off for a whole season of bringing folks back. Um, we're also looking at bigger events. The Three Rivers, Three Rivers Arts Festival will be back here on June 4th um, for in-person activities. Um, we are, as you may have heard, um, much to our media's chagrin, closing down half of a street for two blocks um, for the summer along Fort Duquesne Boulevard. You would have thought that the sky would have fallen with some of the coverage that we have received. But out of the couple of hundred blocks in downtown, I'm pretty confident we're going to be all right. Um, we're going to create a park in public space. We're going to welcome back our cultural institutions from around the region into this space with uh, a giant stage. We're going to see folks like Pittsburgh Public Theater. Um, it will be a host to the Three Rivers Arts Festival. Um, this is going to be a community space where you can come down, enjoy the beautiful views, walk around the city, support the small businesses that have missed you dearly, um, and really create that place that we've been talking about. This is temporary. It's just the summer. Um, but we want to use this as a jumping off point to how do we make our rivers more accessible in downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, when you're standing at the Renaissance Hotel on 6th Street, you have to cross 11 lanes of traffic to get to the river. 
is that really necessary? If we're a city of rivers, like let's make that a little bit more accessible. We certainly want you know everybody to get in and out um, efficiently, but but we can do better, and we want to use this as a vision. Um, so you're going to see events, music, dancing, all the things that we haven't been able to do, kind of popping up. We are talking about um, a welcome back a series of events uh, where we're welcoming the workforce back throughout the summer months. Um, and, and, and we can't wait to see you. That's awesome. And I think some of the ideas that the PDP is leading would be valuable for all of the um, town centers across the region. And so continue to do great work. Um, so I do have a question for Lindsay. Um, obviously, the Biden administration has been super bullish on addressing climate change. How do you think as a region, we can take advantage of this focus um, on investing in climate resiliency? Um, and where do you think we as a city and a region can lead? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so something that we've been working on at the city uh, through leadership with uh, the mayor, Pitt, uh, the UN Sustainable Development Solutions, uh, Steel Valley Authority has been the Marshall Plan for Middle America. Um, you know, for us, it's a way that we can look not just regionally in, in you know, Allegheny County, but to some of those uh, mid-sized cities that we talked about that have similar histories to ours that have been, um, you know, built by coal, steel, and now find themselves in a, in a very different reality. Uh, the Marshall Plan for Middle America, its aim really is to do cross-sectoral research to envision a strategy that addresses climate change, uh, social justice, uh, environmental justice, and the economic crises that you know, we're, we're being met with. Uh, we've been working with Congress, uh, with mayors from some of these cities represented uh, to make sure that uh, some of our asks are built into uh, the infrastructure bill, but also address uh, the kind of economic and workforce shifts that, that need to be made uh, to, to meet these needs. Uh, the Marshall Plan for Middle America is vast. Um, it covers how do we think about uh, building up again our workforce to meet these new challenges, uh, addressing issues like uh, even uh, you know our sponsor talks about connectivity uh, when it comes to you know uh, internet connectivity and making sure that regionally um, for our you know uh, Appalachian brothers and sisters who you know may be more regional or re or rural than us, how do we make sure that they're able um, to uh, connect to these these opportunities here. It talks about um, you know economic justice uh, for a lot of the regions that were built by coal and steel. Who was left behind? How do we make sure in, uh, that in this kind of new envisioning of uh, you know green uh, and clean jobs in our region? How do we make sure that they are included as well? Um, and so, if you haven't taken a peek at it. Um, it's something that you know we've been really using as our, our guiding star um, and really lobbying again Congress uh, to take to take a bite out of and fund um, as well as working with local mayors to ensure that we're all kind of rowing in the same direction and understanding that you know climate change has uh, vast impacts on not just you know um, you know rising sea level and things like that but our uh, you know economic uh, outcomes and future. Right. Um, a few other questions have come in, and I'll quickly answer one. Uh, someone asked, how do we commercialize more innovation across the region? Um, and I think what is in the discussion phase is at the federal level, um, investing in non-coastal cities like Pittsburgh um, to really help expand our capacity to translate all the bright ideas that are in our 30 plus academic institutions and create great companies. And so kind of stay tuned as that takes shape. Um, another question that's come in for the panelists is that we're not as prominent among cities attracting remote workers. Um, and so we'd love to hear your thoughts on how we can change that moving forward. Um, maybe with Lance, who I know has had some thoughts about this. Yeah, I, th I think pretty early on it was clear and this goes back to your competitiveness, like uh, comment that, we, that that Tom and Lindsay commented on. So one of the things that I'm I'm excited about is I think there is a a shifting landscape in that competitiveness dynamic, right? And so those middle market cities that we mentioned are still absolutely competition, but now I feel like there is also like some of the big guys are also like 
uh, you can pick some pick some investment off of them too. And I think particularly in places where you have a high proportion fully and permanently distributed workforce, right, uh, post COVID in higher cost, lower quality of life cities, absolutely we need to um, we need to attract those people. Um, Pittsburgh basically sells itself as far as I'm concerned on a lot of those really, you know, important metrics about quality of life, about affordability, et cetera. And I think the key, and I'm no marketing genius, but the key is segmenting the portion that are most likely to hear that message and resonate that message as an attraction, um, as an attraction initiative. So the, I think the, the most important thing is like using data-driven metrics to say, okay, these are the people within a fully distributed workforce company. These are the people with some connection to Pittsburgh. And from that subset, you know, here's, our, here's our, 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 our target audience and doing some really strong direct marketing to those people, which is easier now than ever. I think that would be a great idea. I know other states and cities have done um, incentive packages for relocation. Um, that's that's also a possibility, um, but it is something we got to look closely at, uh, particularly given our historical challenges with population stagnation. Awesome. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I agree with that completely. I, I think that you know, it's, I mean, I know anecdotally we've seen. I'm just I don't want to talk to school, but there's a couple of you know opportunities recently that wasn't about frankly like place. It was like just being here with people distributed across the region. So I, I do, and I think the answer from a policy perspective would be, and I, this is just kind of wonky, but you know, you, you know, we talk about attracting companies all the time, and I think historically it's like big capital projects, right? Like, I, but I do think in this, and we do need to watch watch closely. Like, what does that mean? Are we attracting? I think we're, I think we're attracting people. <laughs> Could be our our near term versus like large, you know, large capital investments, and you know, candidly. As I sit here, you know, most of the, frank, and I, you know, a lot of the tools we have is really capital based, right? Like, you know, you want equipment, you want a big land, all this stuff. Those, those are how we operate. But I, I do think there's a shifting landscape around that. And how do we think about, you know, thinking about planting flags, but really what that means is planting people here. If they're, if they're gonna be in their homes, they're gonna be in sort of flex office spaces and these types of things. And how do we position place and our, our strategy around that, so. Awesome. Well, we're at time, but I do have one last thing I want each panelist to throw out, kind of one event they're looking forward to. I just canceled a trip to stay here for the Black Music Fest as planned for Point Park. And so I'd love to hear from others on kind of what they're thinking about this summer in the region. I mean, live music, most definitely. And one of the most depressing things of 2020 was this indelible image. I get chalkboard in my kitchen that I had all the shows I was planning to go to in April and May. And just like, as they got canceled, erasing them off that board was like one of the most heartbreaking things. So definitely looking forward to live music. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I, I joking before you got on, but like, you know, for the first time, somebody asked me recently, hey, we should get lunch, like a colleague. And they asked me, where should we go? And I was like, well, I haven't been out to lunch in like 15 months. So I'm excited to like see people. Uh, I'm excited yeah. to have like a, have some, uh, you know, a, a bite to eat with people that I you know, haven't seen outside of computer screens in a long time. Uh, it's, live music's funny. I, I, we just bought tickets. I won't say what, because my the concert my daughter really wants to go to, but a, a, a concert coming up this summer that, just bought tickets to, and uh, you know, it's, it's exciting to think about going to a venue and like hearing music, and so that that's all very exciting. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking to hope some sense of normalcy. And really, I mean, I mean this sincerely, like actually seeing and talking to people, because I personally operate right. much better in that environment than behind screens all the time. So I'm excited about that. Awesome. Quickly, because we're out of time, Lindsay and Jeremy. Yeah, I would say um, I'm really looking forward to Barrel and Flow Fest. Uh, it's a local uh, beer fest that highlights Black brewers in the region. They're moving to Allentown, which is very exciting and expanding. So uh, hopefully outside, hopefully good beer, hopefully good music. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, same. I, music, um, hanging out with friends uh, that I haven't seen uh, in person in a while, I'm actually missing networking events. You know, a lot of us, that's what we do a lot of. And I'm like, oh man, here's another one. I miss you guys. Like, I want to see you. I want to like have random conversations about things that don't really matter. 
um, versus like the Zoom call, which is very targeted and like we have 30 minutes because we have seven more behind it. So yeah, I, I, I can't wait for that. And I can't wait for things like Picklesburg, um, of course, big events, bringing folks together and just doing what we do best, which is kind of creating community. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, thanks so much to the Chamber for hosting this. Thank you to Comcast for sponsoring and supporting this great conversation. Um, and everyone have a great morning and great weekend.